And welcome back to Warehouse Row in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Marty Brakes and Saldale Sid, surrounded by about 500 to 1,000 of my closest friends. Yes, indeed. But you know, really, Sal, this game is not just for the teams. It's for the fans. It's for the people of Lake Charles as well. And I'll tell you what, you've got to be impressed with the fan support that has come up here to Chattanooga to support these Cowboys. Marty, it has been unbelievable. We got here about 11 o'clock yesterday morning, and every hour on the hour, you can see more Cowboy fans coming in at Chattanooga. And this is basically just a sample of what's going on around town. Uh, really tremendous support for the Cowboys. Now today there was an open practice to both the public and the media and I'll say this the Youngstown crowd not quite so large at their practice but the Cowboy fans were out in full force. We had a chance to speak with a couple of them and this is what they had to say. Man look this is the Cowboys we're talking about here. I mean this is this is no Mickey Mouse team. They come to you know what? <laughs> and they're going to do it. Uh, I know you're one of the diehards. Die uh, so tell me what the, what this means to you. you know? this, this means everything. This is this is Christmas right here. <laughs> you're looking at history in the Mecca. Composure that they showed last week. Come back with three minutes left and, and put on the game out. Uh, playing against Montana like they did and Western Illinois. I think the guys are focused. Uh, I think they've got their act together. And I'm looking for a real good game. And I think we're going to take it. I tell you what, it's one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. I've been following McNeese football since 1968. Uh, we've tried with Jack Dolan, we've tried with Ernie Dubashan, John McCann, everybody. This is probably one of the greatest feelings we've had as a team and probably as a community. I like our chances. I think we got a good team, and uh, I don't know that much about Youngstown, but I, I like our chances. I think we got a good chance, and, and just see what happens, you know. Looking forward to it and fired up and, and just, just having a great time. I predict 28 to 10. I told a local radio a TV station that yesterday, uh, and he said, why 10? I said, well, we're probably going to put third and probably fourth string in about the fourth quarter, and, and let, them, let them score 10. You know, I think it'll be probably about 28 to 10. So I don't think it's any uh, small thing to say that the Cowboys will be well represented at tomorrow's contest. Some estimates have about seven or 8,000 folks coming up from Lake Charles to watch this ball game. Well, the nice thing is they're going to have great support, but if you're one of the few fans who aren't or isn't in Chattanooga, you can catch this game at 1 o'clock on ESPN. And, of course, we all know ESPN, known around the world as one of the sports leaders. They've sent a tremendous production crew, and the word is, you know, they're going to do their best to put on a first-class performance. And, hey, we caught up with them this morning while they were setting up. Here's a look at what goes on behind the scenes. Cowboy fans, get ready for national television exposure like you've never seen before. ESPN is here, ready to put on its best performance. We always approach it with first-class standards. Um, we're not going to we're not going to half step on this game because it's not um, uh, Alabama playing Auburn or it's not LSU playing playing uh, Notre Dame in the Independence Bowl. Uh, this game is just as important to us as it is to as as the other games are, and we want to go out there and do just as good a job with this game. There is work to do and plenty of it because what you see isn't always what you get. Without these workers, the show doesn't go on. When people watch the game on TV and they see three announcers, mm -hmm. they see three of 75 people that actually do the game. It's, um, it's the producer, it's the director, it's the cameraman, it's the audio guys, it's the tape guys, it's the utilities. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a whole lot of people that make the show happen. In the control room, last-minute preparations are underway. To give McNeese and everyone else the best broadcast possible, the production crew must be ready. But you set up the day before. There's just so much you have to do. There's so many logistical things. You have so many more players. You got to do, you know, flashbacks on players, and you got to build headshots. There's just so much more to do, and it's real difficult um, to set up and do the game, a football game, in the same day. Sal, you and I are two of the fortunate folks who will be able to watch this game in person, but it's nice to know that if you can't make it here in person, you will be able to see the game. That is right. ESPN has got us covered, and who else has covered as we're joined by the two commissioners of both teams who are represented in the conference, Marty. I've got to say, the two fans here real quickly <laughs> have handed me a little something to put around my neck. Okay, I don't know what that says exactly, but I think it has something to do with the game tomorrow. As you mentioned, we are joined by the two commissioners of the participating teams of the conferences they are joined with. Greg Sankey in the Southland Football League is here with us. This is Patty Viverito of the Gateway Conference. And Patty, I guess this is a, a big event for you because Youngstown State joined your league just this year. Already they're playing for a national title. I know, but when Greg invited me here tonight, I didn't know I was being invited to a lynching. Yes, it's a lot of support. Yeah. 
I'll tell you what, the Gateway Football League, certainly a lot of good football played there, isn't there? We have all the respect in the world for our opponents this weekend. We know that the Southland Conference, particularly McNeese, has had our number this year. We're just hoping that the luck changes tomorrow. All right. Greg? Well, well Greg, uh, unlike your counterpart, you are not at a lynching right now. You must be tremendous. You must be... So happy and enthusiastic to see the response you're getting here in Chattanooga, not just for McNeese, but for the Southland Conference. Now, this is a new site, and it was important for us this year to have a great showing for all of 1AA football, and I can't think of a better team to represent the Southland Football League and the NCAA 1AA Football Championship than McNeese State University. Now, I, I know you've been following the Cowboys throughout the playoffs. You were yes. at the home game against Montana. I saw you at Western Illinois, and I know Marty saw you at Delaware. That's important to you, isn't it? Oh, very important. I'll say this for the fans in Lake Charles. Last November, after the season was over, we picked our teams who we thought would win it next year and I picked McNeese so I was on the train a long time ago but uh, attending those games is important uh, McNeese is an important part of the Southland Football League and it's a pleasure for me this is a great part of the job to be here tonight and tomorrow it is a terrific at it it is a terrific atmosphere that we're in right now and and Marty uh, truthfully I think having both commissioners here says a lot for what's going on here at this championship site oh yeah I mean this is all in the spirit of sportsmanship but I don't know Patty might not be so popular. She's freed the penguins. <laughs> Patty. I figured we should fight fair. That's true, and we will fight fair tomorrow on the field. Tell me about how Youngstown State came to be a member of the Gateway. I know they flirted with Division I membership going to the Mid-American Conference. How was it that you landed them in your league this year? There's no doubt that we have always coveted Youngstown State as a member. I mean, who wouldn't? They're three-time national championships. They're great 1AA power. When we lost one of our original members to the Ohio Valley, Eastern Illinois, we decided we needed a seventh team. And what better place to go than Youngstown? We looked at going a step east and a big step up, and here we are the very first year in the national championship game with unbelievably our number three team yeah and that is kind of remarkable we should tell everybody that you have a strong lead because you have some other great members and a lot of these teams people in lake charles are familiar with why don't you go ahead and tell us who is in your league well western illinois uh you were in macomb last week or two weekends ago they won the league and northern iowa finished second youngstown state finished a strong third and it just goes to show i've said for years it's harder to win the gateway conference and the national championship and now i've got evidence that's right and southwest missouri state is also in your league cowboys play southwest missouri earlier in the year so well, Marty, since we are in the Southland Football League, let's give Mr. Sankey here the last word. How do you see this game developing tomorrow afternoon? Well, obviously, both defenses are uh, very strong. That's what's brought both of these teams here. Uh, last week, it looked like the McNeese State offense came to life a little bit, and uh, would hope to see that again. And watch Donnie Ashley, as always. And I want to tell the people in Lake Charles that our entire league's behind them. we got a Jacksonville State <laughs> alum over here leading the cheers. We got folks from Stephen F. Austin, Southwest Texas, and Troy State up here making sure the Southland Football League brings home a championship tomorrow. All right, we certainly appreciate it. And folks, uh, they're going to be at the game tomorrow, so are we. We're going to tell you a little bit more about that coming up. We'll see you in a second.